I know you and King Howard were good friends. Well, I think so, or very much so. And uh, we were together on the uh, 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 the stuff with the Atomic Energy Commission, of course, for many years. Going back to uh, King Hubbard, C.V., it, it seems to me that his paper, his 1940 paper, didn't have the impact it should have had on that. Well, <laughs> well uh, if you look at uh, my acceptance of the medal that uh, he gave me, <laughs> the, uh, yes, say that he had particularly, he had more trouble. He was more revolutionary at the time than I ever was. And, uh, but uh, he had more, even more trouble getting his ideas across. Well, here's 15 years after he publishes. Here's a first teaching all the groundwater people that as soon as uh, Darcy's law fails, you get turbulence. Mm -hmm. And of course, that's one of the ideas, <laughs> the main ideas of uh, Hubbard's uh, 1940 paper. Yeah. The, uh, why was that, that that paper was not, why do you think that happened? Well, I know as far as I'm concerned, I was having all my troubles with getting, getting transient <laughs> hydraulics across, <laughs> and so I didn't pay, I didn't work on King's, Albert, King's paper like I would have liked to. But uh, it's hard to get an idea across. After all, uh, what was it Einstein said uh, that when they measured the star during the eclipse to prove about whether his relativity ideas are wrong, he didn't bother him. He says, uh, if I'm right, uh, I'll be a great man or something like that. And if I'm wrong, I'll be just, just another Jew. <laughs> <laughs> another clerk in a patent office, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> The, uh, so, now I don't know why, uh, well, yes, uh, as I say, if you're going to be, uh, have uh, new ideas, it's going to take some time to get the idea across. Let me, let me ask you another question. The, the pumping test at Grand Island that Lee ran, how yes. much of that was, was that designed to test? Oh, uh, uh, Meinzer had, uh, uh, had gone to Europe and I met uh, um, a Dolph team, mm -hmm. Gutter team, the young one. And uh, so he had talked about, he had he'd been using pumping tests, you know, along in, in the Rhine Valley and other places to, for water supply. So Meinzer uh, talked to team and he brought the idea back and he decided to really try it out. And uh, oh, how many wells did Lee have? Well, there was a, that was the first really full-scale pumping test with yes, lots uh -huh. of observation wells. Well, it was the uh, only one <laughs> at that okay. time. Yeah, it was the only one in this country at that time. Well, well, no. Uh, well, I think uh, who uh, I think did Piper do something in Pennsylvania. Who was that in Pennsylvania that uh, presumably uh, made some sort of a pumping test? But I think this was after Meinzer had been to Europe and had talked to Gunther Team. I see. So he because that this was just guide. before Hitler's time, and Meinzer was sending back to Team uh, uh, various uh, uh, baskets uh, of food. I see. Because uh, Team was having a hard time there, as Hitler was. Team was a Jew? No, I don't. Team, I don't think Team was a Jew. It sounded like it particularly. Mm -hmm. I don't think he was a Jew. But uh, uh, hey, he was hard up at least at this time. Mm -hmm. So I guess he appreciated Meinzer's uh, baskets of food. So and the idea at, at Grand Island was to run this. This was Meinzer's idea, and Meinzer uh, actually, you know, uh, what Lee's paper is 
pumping test and getting the permeability is what the word is used. And uh, also showing how the test could be get the uh, 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 coefficient of storage, really, specific yield. Right. And uh, uh, Meinzer, Meinzer told me that he was the one that insisted that uh, Wenzel go into this matter of specific yield out of these pumping tests. So then told him how to do it. That's what Wenzel would not have done that. He would have used the straight team analysis and he will, he would have used it only for permeability. I see. And uh, so uh, So Meinzer insisted on that. Meinzer insisted on it according to Meinzer. And I, I guess it's true. I, I think see. it's true. <laughs> <laughs> CV, I wanted to ask you something I asked you in your office a little while ago. How did you, how did you arrive at the heat flow analogy? <laughs> what, what I don't led think you, there's any question about it. What led you to that analogy? Well, you start thinking about uh, Team's equation, for instance. And what I did first uh, was uh, I assumed Team's equation. Now, if you make the assumption that uh, uh, the uh, all the water that comes out of storage is immediately uh, transposed to the mm -hmm. rim of yeah. Team's equation. You get all the log term out of the uh, transient equation out of it. But of course, uh, first of all, you've got a edge in the water mm -hmm. because where the uh, Team's equation goes right up to the surface. You see. And you can't have an edge in water very well. And <laughs> so, uh, uh, actually, for most of the stuff, that would have been pretty well. I was working on the high planes then and uh, trying to get somebody to think about it. See, at Portellus, the bottom of the uh, aquifer, is a thousand feet above the place where it is, where the main discharge of the water occurs at the eastern edge of the mm -hmm. high plains. I guess it does. I'm not quite sure of that anymore. That question had been bothering me a long time, and it doesn't take it isn't any great piece of thinking of uh, realizing that. Uh, you can get a transient idea. The uh, uh, I don't think it's uh, hard. In, in heat, you get specific heat, and you got uh, conductivity, thermal conductivity, and uh, uh, so you've got the uh, uh, same setup really that you have in water, and of course. Uh, Specific yield is what I had in mind first, mm -hmm. and I used that term first for the. Uh, and I uh, don't think there's any great. Uh, it occurred uh, to you, but it didn't occur to anybody else. Well, Lubin was a close friend when you were at the Cincinnati. Well, yes, he helped me an awful lot. He. And this correspondence that I think he can have copies of, he uh, 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 says, uh, uh, I offered him a uh, uh, co officeship. Yes, I know you did. And he, he turned you down. He tur well, he turned me down. He said, first, because uh, uh, I, my part was very small, and second, because from the standpoint of mathematics, it isn't uh, Is it? very important. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I said, uh, I hope this doesn't sound too snooty to you, and of course it has anything to do with your paper. I want to ask so, you about something else. One of the things that you worked on early on was the transport problems, and I know you and Herb did some experiments, and you were, were looking at uh, dispersion. <laughs> the, uh, well, and you did those early experiments. I well, think. it's the, uh, I, I uh, claimed uh, Harold A. Thomas, Harvard, uh, 
insisted that you get some dispersion. And I said, I just couldn't see it amount to anything. Yeah, it might be a little raveling around the edges of the die, something like that. And so he got uh, his men to work on it. They got, uh, 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 what's his name? Kaufman, was it Kaufman? Well, Kaufman is at, uh, at, and, Berkeley? Uh, at Berkeley. Yeah, he was sanitary engineer there. And uh, but Thomas also had somebody working at Harvard. Oh yes, uh, he started it all, because uh, I had uh, made uh, some remarks about that, and, and Harold uh, decided or uh, didn't believe that, and so he uh, uh, got his men to perform this, and uh, he did it under the mathematics department actually. Uh, who the Harvard man is? I've got his paper in my files, and uh, and Kaufman and Todd and well, Riffey was their student, worked out at, uh, at Berkeley. At Berkeley, and uh, then uh, Dave Todd told me that they had gone out to the field. You see the the the. Uh, Figures you get in the laboratory, oh, yeah, of course, small. Are, yeah. are so small that yeah. it didn't mean a thing in the field. The, uh, so I was right, and Harold was right, you see, <laughs> Harold Thomas. <clears throat> and uh, he's about the smartest guy I ever saw. Yeah, and he's, he's uh, I don't know him well, but he's certainly very mm -hmm. smart. Yeah, and uh, the, uh, we got along fine. Uh, <laughs> I didn't realize it, but. Uh, he thought I was, well, one of his students said that the only, there are two things that Harold Thomas thought he ought to have thought of. One of them was, uh, was uh, uh, Taylor's uh, work on uh, uh, Fothy pipes and so forth. The, uh, and uh, the other was uh, oh, transient theory, groundwater theory. Oh, well, he thought he should have thought of that? Well, yes. Anyway, any of smart, as smart as Harold should. He just didn't happen to think about it. Mm -hmm. It wasn't very important to him, really. And uh, so he uh, did that. Well, at any rate, uh, in California, uh, Rafai did his work. And uh, then uh, they went out to this little aquifer they have mm -hmm. at uh, Berkeley, about a four foot sandstone, 100 mm -hmm. feet down, something like that. And uh, so they got, uh, was it, uh, uh, one of their students work on that. And so uh, Dave Todd said that they'd gone out to the field. And so I asked him if uh, he got what he expected. He said, we sure as hell didn't. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and uh, so uh, they didn't. Uh, when uh, we got such tremendously large uh, uh, dispersivities uh, in uh, nature and such little ones in the laboratory, the laboratory uh, there was something else involved and the only thing that could be involved is again King Hubbard's uh, uh, refraction at mm -hmm. uh, float lines at mm -hmm. uh, lenses of different permeability so that, uh, and uh, of course, uh, there's never been a suite of samples that didn't show a wide range, in a well, that didn't show a wide range mm -hmm. of uh, permeability. Uh, so that, uh, and uh, also, you never find the same log in any wells, any yeah. two wells. Right. So the only thing you got, you know that you're getting refraction at the, uh, at the uh, uh, edges of your different lenses. So that was the, uh, I think. Uh, That's when Jim Cahill did that, those model studies. Oh yes, uh, then, uh, well, actually uh, before that, uh, and yes, King Hubbard uh, and actually gave, gave the, uh, Excuse, he says he found out that nobody believed in theory, and so I guess he got uh, 
his uh, keel, as it was, and to do the experiments to show that it actually did happen where he had promised, as he had prophesied. Well, it's very interesting, C.V. Well, it's uh, nice to hear you reminisce about it. 